There we go. The heat sink with the liquid metal. But today we're going to change out that liquid metal application to something that I hope it's more than just snake oil devour. Because it was a lot of money. Expensive! Cryo sheet. Yes. And it's something of a PTM sort of thing. So it's a thermal compound that goes on your CPU, GPU, whatever. With uh, a lot less of the side effects, or I should say a lot less of the negative side effects when using liquid metal application. But here's my problem. Liquid metal is actually a pain to work with. It's messy, it's electrically conductive, and if it spreads onto your motherboard, you can easily short it out, and it also corrodes aluminum, and it has this annoying tendency to shift or oxidize well over time. Now, spec-wise, yeah, compared to liquid metal, this cryo sheet doesn't really publish an exact conductivity number. Thermal Grizzly just calls it outstanding and says that it's basically way better than their carbonaut pads. On paper anyway, conductonaut still wins, no doubt about it. When I stress tested at 80 watts, well, with liquid metal, the CPU climbed to about 94 degrees C and just sat there. But the clocks, there was something wrong here. They just hovered at around 3400 megahertz or so. Uh, <laughs> after swapping to cryo sheet, well, the temperatures were basically identical, which is still a win in itself. Maybe even half a degree cooler, I might be wrong. But anyway, the big difference was definitely in performance. Now the CPU holds a steady 4000 megahertz at the same 80 watts. More or less same fan speed, same noise, and you know, just more power. So uh, yeah, that's definitely a performance uplift in there, and I'm really happy about it. 